Here's Voice of Victory. Welcome, George. Thank you, Gloria. I'm in, I always enjoy studying the Word with you. It is, it is so good to be on the Believer's Voice of Victory. Yes, and welcome amen. to you as well. We're so glad that you're with us. I'm and, enjoying it. And Gloria and I, we are, on our, we are on our 333rd day of teaching on prosperity together. And 33rd and, uh, day. All, all of the notes, all of the notes are available to you on kcm.org. Not just these that we're teaching, but Gloria, all the notes that go back to 2010 wow. when we that's, started teaching on prosperity. That's they can a get, wonderful thing, George. And, and I thought about this right before we went on the air. Um, <clears throat> I've been teaching a series in church on tithing. And these are, these are the notes that I've been using. My notes are just a little bit different from these television notes, but this would be great, pastors, for you to take these notes, the series that we're doing, and just do, do a five-week series on the tithe. Do you and, suppose there's any t pastors <clears throat> that don't tithe? Mm. I just had that thought. Well, that, they, they that's... They better shape up. <clears throat> they better... You, you heard it here, pastors, if you're not tithing... You know, you're right, Gloria, and I've heard stories before about pastors saying that, well, pastors don't tithe, the people tithe. Uh-uh. Somebody made that up. No, it's, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somebody made it up. It says in Malachi 3, bring ye. Ye, ye. <clears throat> and that's and right. ye, ye, ye or he or her. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh -huh. That's right. <clears throat> so we, we began this week on Monday talking about tithers' rights and how tithing is the foundation to prosperity. You can't grow spiritually if you're not a tither. And you can't, you can't fulfill the greatness of what God wants for you without tithing, without giving Him back the 10% that belongs to Him. You don't want to be a God robber. No, you don't. You don't want to be. <laughs> no. <clears throat> you no, don't no. want to be a God robber. Mm -mm. So today, Gloria, what we're doing is today we're going to talk from Malachi 3.10. Okay. Tomorrow we're going to talk from Malachi 3.11. But today we're talking about the windows of heaven. Oh, let's do the it. The windows of heaven. And that's one of the tither's rights. And uh, read for us, Gloria, there, Malachi 3.10 there at the top of the page. Let's get started. Bring ye all the tithe, all the tithes, all the tithes. to the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me here with, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open to you. You do this, mm. I'll prove myself to you. If I will, disprove, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, wow. that there shall not be, be room enough to, to receive, receive it. it. Have you ever known the Lord to exaggerate? No. I never have No, either. no, I no. believe this. I fully believe this. And I like what this. you just said. You were just reading that and you said, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. Prove me now. Yeah. Then you said, if you'll not open the windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing. And, and you said, it's, you said, and you do this and he'll do that. That's right. How simple. How simple it is. We, we never got anywhere <clears throat> financially until we faithfully became tithers. Yeah. And you know, I wasn't yeah. raised in a church. I never heard the word tithe when right. I was growing up. Right. So I had a long way to go. Now Ken yeah. was, he was raised he in the Baptist that. church. He yeah. knew. He knew but that. But yeah. well, no, that's, it's not enough. You have to actually do it. <laughs> no, <laughs> you have to do it. And, and again, you were just talking a moment ago about, about pastors not tithing. This, if you read through all through Malachi, it was the priests or the pastors that God was getting on because well, they were true. bringing, right. they were bringing, um, the polluted bread upon the altar. They were bringing the, the blind for the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. He said, is that mm -hmm. not evil? Mm -hmm. And so we have to do the same thing. As a pastor, I tithe. I tithe of course. on everything that comes into our household. So there'll be meat Absolutely. in the house, say at the Lord. That's what you have, everybody has to do, whether you're a pastor or not a pastor. You, yeah, you need to tithe. If you want to, if you, you don't have to. I mean, if you don't want no, to be blessed, if you don't true. want a blessing poured out on you and the windows you of heaven open, you don't have to tithe. The windows can be shut <laughs> <laughs> if you shut want them the to window. be, but mm. no, I want the windows of heaven open. Oh my, yes. <clears throat> and Gloria and I have talked about this, you know, this, this. Let me say something. Yeah, go ahead. That's not just about money either. Ooh. I mean, it's about yeah. God being 
where you need him to be. I was thinking about that little girl that got her hair caught in the, uh, in the drain in the, in of the, a swimming the, pool. Yes, yes, In yes. Mark's, Mark Barkley's yep. air, uh, yep. church, congregation, and uh, she was drowning. Well, that one, it was, it was not because they weren't tithing, it was, it, but it was that they had to have God on the spot right yes. now. Her yes. hair caught in the drain. Mm -hmm. Yep, caught in the drain. And, and yeah. the Lord saved her. Yeah, and her, his son-in-law stood over the grandbaby. Yes, that's right. And said, we have tithers' that's right. rights. That's why it reminded me of that. We that's have right. tithers' rights. He said, we are tithers. She was dead. <clears throat> she wasn't she was dead. For five time. minutes, she was dead. Yeah. And she got raised up. Praise that was God. such, what a miracle that was. <sighs> and when you are a tither, there's a confidence on the inside. The that, windows of heaven are open. Yeah, the windows of, are open all the time. They're open all the time. And there's such a confidence on the inside. I remember Kenneth saying this some years ago. You can come before any situation in the name of a tither. That's right. Do you remember that? The name I of a do. tither. I do remember that. And <clears throat> that's what that son-in-law was doing. He mm. came in that situation. At least she was dead. In the name of a tither. That's right. That's wow. good, George. Wow. Well, People Gloria. People get a hold of that. That's good. What I did here is I, I, I broke this down in, in, in different pieces in studying that Malachi 3.10. So the first one here, it says, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now where, herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. And if you look at point one under A, mm -hmm. it says, okay, bring all your tithes into the storehouse. And I looked up the word storehouse. And the word storehouse in the Hebrew is the word depository, treasure house, mm -hmm or a magazine of weapons in God's armory. How about that one? <laughs> How about that? <clears throat> How about that one? Weapons. <clears throat> a magazine of weapons in God's armory. So you bring your tithes into well, that storehouse. what is one of the biggest enemies of anybody, Christian or not Christian, <clears throat> if they weren't acting on the Word? Finances. Yeah, well, that's true. And that's, that's this, true. Is, this, is, this works where that's concerned. Sick, but if you ever had a sick child, yeah. you'd be a tither. Yeah. You'd have tithers' rights. Tithers' rights, as Mark preached, and that little exactly. girl was raised from the dead. Exactly, exactly. Glory to God. And then it talks about the meat, so that there is meat in my house. Yeah. And in the uh, the offer that we're giving this week, Brother Copeland teaches that meat is the spiritual revelation of the word. That's right. We and that's what we live on. Yeah. If we go to a dead church that doesn't preach the Word, we will not have faith if that's all we have. That's right. You can go to a dead church and then go to a live church, yeah. but if you just go to a dead church and don't ever <laughs> get anything, you're not going to have faith. And you don't put your tithe in a dead work. No. That, that, that in Deuteronomy 26, all of Deuteronomy 26 is talking about how to handle the tithe, mm -hmm. tithing the tithe. And one of the things it's talking about in there is don't put it in a dead work. Don't put it in how something it that's dead. It, it, uh, I forget how it's worded, but that's essentially it's, what it means. Yeah, not, not in something that's dead. Well, you, you're going to put something, you're going to put your tithe in a place where you're getting fed. That's right. Where you're getting built up, where you're getting equipped in the Word of God so that there is meat mm -hmm. in His house, and that meat is spiritual revelation. Your tithe goes where the Lord has stored up wisdom and revelation and for you. And that's where your growth is. That's where your growth is. If you're yeah. going to a dead church, <clears throat> You're not growing. But this explains that meat is spiritual revelation of the Word. That's what it you is. You go where you yeah. go in and you learn things about the Word and it gets in your heart and it stirs up yeah. your faith and yeah. it makes you want to yeah. do what's right, what God says. With the people that come out here. You go here, to a dead church. Yeah. Nothing happens. The, well, right. Well, the people that you gotta come out here. You've got to have some Word preached. You've got to have some Word preached. And yeah. that's why. As the pastor of this church, I study very diligently for the last 20 now six years pastoring this church. My Saturdays have been devoted to study and prayer. Well, you can tell it, George. I don't go out. I don't go places. Um, we That is a holy day. Amen. To be able to prepare. And actually, you know, I, I, I got this from Pastor Nichols, you know, before he passed away. What a tremendous pastor. Yes. 
uh, precious man, just tremendous. And he just, he just so fed me. And one of the things that he talked about is, and I, this is true. When a pastor gets done with a Sunday morning message, he may take five minutes for a break and then next Sunday's starting. <laughs> so next Sunday's already, next Sunday's already working in me. It's already there. It's already, you get into a rhythm yeah. of that. And so here it's talking about that spiritual meat that people need to have. We need to, we need to take people, and that's the whole purpose of Kenneth Copeland Ministries, taking people from the milk of the Word yeah. to the, the meat. meat of the Word. So they're able to stand on their faith and believe God and receive the things that belong to them. Yes, thank God. So <clears throat> your tithe goes where the Lord has stored up wisdom and revelation for us. And right when I wrote that down, Gloria, the Lord gave me Proverbs 2.7. 2, he lays up sound wisdom mm -hmm. for the righteous. So your tithe goes where you're being rooted, grounded, and established yes, in the Word amen. of God. That's where it goes. Amen. Now, in Deuteronomy 26, 2, it says, take it to the place where the Lord your God has chosen. I thought that was very interesting. The place where you're going to be fed, mm -hmm. the place where you're mm -hmm. going to be built up, the place where the Word of God is going to be so alive in you, that's where it goes. In order for the church or in order for this ministry, it really is a win-win situation because you're bringing that tithe to a place that is producing the Word of God for you yeah. to be able to be successful in your life. On Monday, I read a testimony from a woman, a single mother <clears throat> who was having a hard time financially. Well, she started watching the Believer's Voice of Victory, our broadcast in particular, and it so lit a fire on the inside of her, revelation started to come and money came to her. She had Wonderful. no money and money started Praise coming to God. her. Well, see, that, that's the case in point for what we're doing here. We're mm -hmm. producing the Word of God so people can be fed and built up. That's what Faith the tithe goes for. Faith comes by hearing. Faith hearing comes by, by hearing. Word. And <clears throat> if you shut that off, if you shut off the vow of the Word, yeah. everything around us is going to dry up. Wither, it'll wither. So yeah. that's why the tithe is used for the production of the Word of God. Oh man, it's vital. We have to have it. <clears throat> and that's Don't first, quit, George. No, Don't quit. and that's the first time I've ever said that, okay. that the tithe is used for the production of the Word that's of God, exactly to get the Word right. of God out there, to feed the people so that they can grow financially and they can Amen. grow in every way. They can Good be job. healed and delivered. Yes. Amen. So, woo, woo. <clears throat> wow. Then look at number four there. That says, prove me now. The Lord said, prove me. Prove me in this. It'd be like, it would be like me coming to you and saying, <clears throat> Gloria, I, I'd like, and this is many years ago, but, but uh, we had a pastor at the church and the pastor was leaving and, and you guys were looking for pastors everywhere <laughs> to fill that slot. And I finally came to you one day and I said, Gloria, why don't you, why don't you let me coordinate the church? Coordinate. That was smooth, George. Yeah, that, that was, was smooth. A smooth. I, I didn't, so you said, you said, well, George, we're having a meeting with Kenneth in a couple of days. Why don't you tell him then what you want to do? So, okay. So we went into the meeting. Well, between those two days, the Lord dealt with me and <clears throat> we had the meeting. Kenneth got tired of the meeting that we were having, business meeting. So he got up, he was leaving the room. He stood at the door of his office and you said, Ken, George has I something. Hear it now. <laughs> George has something he wants to tell you. And Kenneth looked at me and I just, my, I just stared <laughs> at him. Did you think you were in trouble? I, I stared at him and he said, what? I said, I want to pastor the church. <laughs> I said, don't remember that. He George. said, it's about time. So, and your jaw dropped. You were like, oh. <laughs> but basically I was coming to you both and saying, let me pastor the church. Let me prove to you. Let me prove yes. to you that I can do this. Was it ever a great decision? And so 26 years later, I'm still pastoring years the church. Later. And I'm going to make it, it, George. You're going to make it. Well, on the other hand, God's saying to us, let me prove it to you. Yeah. Let me prove to you that I'll open the windows of heaven and pour you out oh, a blessing man. that oh, there's not. The, the, this in the Good News translation, we're looking at number four little a in verse 10, put me to the test mm -hmm. and you will see. Yes. Amen. When you tithe, Absolutely. the Lord is saying, put me to the test. I'll show you what I can do. There is a whole new world for you available to the tithe. That's really what we did. Yeah. I mean, you proved we, it. When we learned about tithing, 
Exactly. We really felt like we needed the money more than God did. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> but we'd already decided that we we're going to do what we saw yeah. in the Word. Yeah. And so we became tithers and we became more prosperous and more prosperous and more prosperous. Oh, praise God. Glory to God. And as long yeah. as you'll do what the Word says and walk in faith, That's right. you'll keep getting That's right. increasing in your finances. And the Lord said, prove me. And Let's, then he said, we saw, we said, well, we're going to do what, are we out of time yet? No, no, we're, we got to go to the second then page. Then we, you know, we were, <laughs> we were into this. I mean, we were going for yeah. it. And we, we said, we're going to do whatever we see in the Word of God. That's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. And that's do. what you did with the tithe. Yeah, but there was a step there in between. Oh. <laughs> and then we saw in the Word where it says, oh, no man, anything but Whoops. to love him. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, you know, Ken wanted an airplane, I wanted house. And where, where was that going to come and, from? And she how couldn't. are we going to do that now with yeah. that th money? Yeah. But wow. you know what? We put it to the test. We put it to the test. We put God's money wow. in the church. And the we blessing. We worshiped <laughs> him with, it, with yeah. it, and the blessing came. Okay. Well, I heard it this way. You put the money in and the blessing came out. <laughs> That's right. That's exactly right. Go to page two. They've given us barely five minutes for this. So go to your second page, Glory, if you would. Okay. And see how much of this we can cover in this little, you can do it, George. little bitty you can do space it. of time. This is the last page. You can do yeah. it. So it says there at the top, in the scripture, I'll open the windows of yes. heaven and pour you out a blessing. In glory of the, win the word windows in, in the Hebrew, it's the word floodgates. Amen. Floodgates. And I looked up the word floodgates and it is, a floodgate is the last restraint holding back an outpouring of something powerful or substantial. Oh, I like that. Oh man. And then I looked up another definition of it, something serving to restrain an outburst. So when the windows of heaven are open, it's like a floodgate that mm -hmm. opens up. Mm -hmm. And it's an, like the dam breaking. <clears throat> it's the dam breaking and the water just coming and flooding. And, and I'm glad you mentioned that because if you look at point two, that is the very same word used when the earth was flooded in Genesis 7:11. Is that right? Wow. Floodgates, the windows. Floodgates, yeah. The windows of heaven or the floodgates of heaven were opened up. And <clears throat> what the Lord showed me about this he will pour out a flood of blessing on the tither through the same windows he poured out the flood of water. Praise God. The floodgates have opened up. For the tither, it is a great flood of every kind of provision. Praise God. Now, <clears throat> now where, where does it say pour? Pour. Pour. It's here in verse, pour verse you 10. Pour out a blessing. Pour it's you out Malachi a blessing. 310 and it says, and he'll pour you out a blessing. Now, th then I see you've got here in the Hebrew, it's empty out. Empty out. Empty out a blessing. Yeah. Woo, yeah. glory to empty God. Empty out a blessing. <laughs> That's I so like good. That. that is so good. It, it says is. in this translation, I'll open the windows of heaven and flood you with blessing after blessing. In another one, NIV, see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you'll, have, you'll not have room yeah, enough yeah, for yeah. it. Praise God. And <clears throat> I like this quote down here. Look at this quote from Jerry. Don't let Satan's excuses keep you from faithfully honoring God with your tithes. That's right. The windows of heaven represent an outflow of God's blessing showering you in every part of your life. Oh, I like it. It is God responding truth, to our obedience to His Word. Why would anyone want to close those windows in I'm their I'm not going to close them. Praise God. Isn't so, that good? Two minutes, Gloria. The last part down here, it says that there shall not be room enough to receive it. So the ESV, the English Standard Version says, put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts. If I'll not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you a blessing until there is no more need, no more need left. No more need. Now, I like yeah. that. That's yeah. good. Instead of no more room. No more need. There's, everything's filled up. And then the new American. Everything's American, taken care of. It's all taken care of. For the tither, it's all taken care of. That's right. I can come to the Lord in the name of a tither knowing my needs are I'm met. I'm going to write that down. It's all taken care of. It's all taken care of. Isn't that good, George? The New American Standard Bible says, I will open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you a blessing until it overflows. Hallelujah. Overflows. overflows. And then this International Standard Version, I will pour out on you blessing without measure. Oh, Praise don't you like that one? I do. Would you write a song about standing, uh, living in the overflow, George? 
I will write a song about okay. living in the overflow. Thank you. I'd like to hear. I will. I will like make a note. Okay. <laughs> of that. I'm sure you can do it. Living in the overflow. Doesn't that sound good? It sounds good. Now I have. I've got Gloria's page, and we'll include Gloria's page of her Bible from Malachi 3 in these outlines. <laughs> but in her page written down here, it said, a flood of bless blessings can't be contained. Don't try to contain it. Let it go through uh -huh. you. That's it right. will pour out until there is no more in heaven. In ne if necessary, we will create more. That's, you were, you wrote in your um, Bible, your notes here, your Bible my, notes yeah. here. This is God sp speaking. I will pour out until there is no more in heaven. If necessary, we will create is more. It doesn't say no more room. It just says no more. It, well, it says no more room in the King James, oh, oh. but but no more. This this quote. I'm not sure where you got this quote from, but I like it. Um, heaven empties out. In other words. Yeah, heaven empties out. And I know that it's not going to be like this, but I can just see God pouring the blessing on us. And then, and then somebody saying, Hey, we just ran out of such and such. And God going, well, just create more. That's right. That's <laughs> Here right. it comes. We've got more. Praise God for the tithe, Gloria. Praise, Praise God. God. George and I'll be right back. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.